Well, we haven't done one in a while, so it's time for a walk around of Rockley MPD with our foreman, Mark. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Watercrest line. Now before we crack on into Ropley MPD to see a little bit more about what's happening and of course some white metalling, it's an In The Loop episode. So it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Well, we start off with some exciting news. For at the start of the month, we hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. So on a personal note, I'd just like to say thank you so much to everyone who's joined us on this journey so far. It's been absolutely wonderful. And if you haven't already, do consider clicking that red box. You'll be surprised at how much it does help the railway. So once again, thank you so much, guys. The griddle cart is now back into service. It's gonna be in service for another few years before it goes back into the carriage works for full interior and exterior overhaul. From a real rail train perspective, the timetable has been changed ever so slightly because the kitchen car, instead of being at Allsford, is now in the griddle. So, plenty to look forward to and a credit to the carriage guys. In the carriage work itself, the griddle has been replaced by a few other coaches. So the one off to my right is currently having some remedial work, running maintenance, including work on the plumbing and toilets. And at the far end, the coach behind me is having a complete rewire underneath that is. The reason is um, the wires degrade over time, especially the old style wires, which were um, coated with fabric rather than plastic, which is a more modern invention. The problem is how with age and being exposed to the elements, as the underside of a coach is, they will degrade and become really brittle and eventually fail. So they're doing a complete rewire underneath. Over here in the boiler shop, our little tank engine, is back together and it's had its hydraulic test where they pump it full of water to one and a third times the working pressure to test structural integrity and check for any leaks. Needless to say, it passed with flying colors and the next stage is gonna be its outer frame steam test where they bring the boiler back into steam. Looking at Canadian Pacific's boiler, the two sides and the back head have all been caught and hammered over and the boiler will soon be turned onto its side so they can finish off the rest. Now you may wonder what caulking is. Well, don't worry, we're in luck. For the pilots of a new series we're trying, Jamie took me on to literally show me how to do this job and yes, it's incredibly hard. That's definitely worth a watch, it's called Working On It and there's gonna be a lot more of that coming in the next year. Further down the boiler, the guys here are working on the cladding, which is this stuff here. Essentially behind this, you have the insulation and then the boiler barrel itself. So the idea is to hold in that insulation to keep the boiler, well, insulated, to prevent all that heat being lost and wasted. To hold it in place, you have crinoline, which are these bands here. The actual sheet from the cladding is bolted and held together with bands, so it keeps everything nice and tidy, and this is the stuff that actually gets painted with a locomotive's livery. Looking at our Class 50 line, the main generator is currently away, and they've also sent the other two generators. One is the ETH generator, electric train heating. Essentially, it controls the uh, cooling systems to the engine. They've also sent away the auxiliary generator, which essentially controls compressors, charges, batteries, anything that's not directly involved with moving the locomotive. That's what the main generator does. The reason is, uh, apart from they're not exactly needed at the moment because the engine's not running, it's about four grand to overhaul them, but it's about 60 if they do go bang in service. So understandably, it's good to do it sooner rather than later. Inside, the volunteers are currently at it with their paintbrushes, giving the interior main engine room a nice bit of TLC and making best use of the time available. Now, if I said S15, you might think of 499 or 506, but there's actually three at the railway, and this is the third, 828, owned by the Eastleigh Railway Preservation Society, or ERPS for short. It moved here in 2004 after a successful spell on the mainline and at the Swanage Railway, where the volunteers commenced the overhaul of a the locomotive. They continued up until COVID, where work had to stop, and unfortunately, during COVID, they did lose four of their leading figures of the society, so essentially had to start fresh. They've elected some new board members, they've restarted the working parties down here and we're going to keep you up to date with their progress. If you'd like to chat to them in person you can find them at Garners with their merchandise stand and on Facebook. If you'd like to email them the email is e828.eastleyrps at gmail.com. 
up here at Alton with our 45 ton steam train. It's passed its hydraulic test, it's now back in the frames and the team here are getting it ready for its steam test. That's where the boiler inspector comes down to check the fittings, to wash up plugs, mud hole tours, check that the safety valves lift at the all important pressure, working pressure, and that everything works, all the ancillaries, injectors work as it should. Once it's signed back into service, its first job is going to be going down to Ropley, where the boilers in the boiler shop need rotating and turning so the guys there can continue their work. So, needless to say, it's not going to be too long before this is back in service. Now, when you guys see this, it'll be the day before our Spring Steam Gala, with two visitors joining us at the railway. One from our friends at Dickup Railway Centre, Penn Dennis Council, and a last minute one, Goliath, from friends at the Dartmouth Steam Railway. Certainly set to be a fantastic weekend. Well, as always, the action never stops here at the Watercrest Line. And folks, once again, thank you so much for getting us to that magical 10,000 subscribers mark. If you haven't already, then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Everything helps the railway. Now, it's time to head into Ropley MPD with our foreman, Mark. Over to you. Hello, uh, welcome to the workshop here at Ropley. I'm um, just going to give you a quick tour round of kind of current goings on, really. So, over here, we've got... 499's bogey wheels and frames. See the frames are upside down at the moment. So the wheels are all finished. The axle boxes have been machined, which you'll see down in the machine shop in a minute, working alongside the URE Society. We have got the spring links off of it because they were heavily worn, so we're going to repair those. And then hopefully we can start getting it back together on its wheels in the short term. Down here on the floor, we've got two blanks, which have been water jet cut. They are for 75079. They're the return crank rods. As it's a, it's a restoration, um, there are a few bits of motion missing, those being one. So we've had them was jet cut and we now just need to organise the finished machining of them. Moving down from there, we've got 75079's wheel sets. They've all been retired and such like by our friends at South Devon Railway. Um, they're just being painted cleaned and painted you can see the insides have started to be painted we'll then move on to the outside in the next few weeks in the middle we've got canadian pacific's old and new regulator body it's double b fairly unique to bullies or at least compared to the rest of our engines um, as you can see that old one uh, lump of casting had cracked off so it's had a brand new casting 90% of the machining was done here um, and then we just had to send it away for a last operation that we couldn't quite achieve ourselves. So that's all finished, now needs all the bits assembling um, and fitting together. Down here we've got the axle boxes for 75079 which have just had the white metal thrust faces cast on them earlier in the week. Um, down the workshop we're white metal in the actual crown which is a press fit in this semi-circular shape so this is where Effectively, the weight of the engine sat on the axle. Um, they've all been replaced, but I'll explain a bit more about that down there. So they are obviously need a tidy up, and then we're getting towards the machining stage on those, which is really good. More white metal components. These are our eccentric straps for the austerity. These two have been white metaled and are just waiting machining. Going further down there, you'll see one on the machine in a minute. So it's been left, we got 75079's chassis. Um, fundamentally, it is a complete, well, solid chassis again after it's fit. relatively major surgery with new drag box and new frame stretchers uh, and such like. As you can see, it's 90% sort of painted now. Um, we put the sandboxes back on this week and lubricators, and we're just making a start on the pipework. Good thing about standards from a maintenance and driver operational point of view there's a lot of things being made really easy to access downside from an overall point of view is it means there's miles of pipe work which being a restoration it was all taken off and scrapped at barry and such like so we've got a monumental task of manufacturing all of that another one of the next steps on 75079 will be to start the frame alignment so we will be effectively setting up a telescope in the cylinder, which will give us a line of sight. Um, so we can set the slide bars parallel to the cylinder. So effectively the piston isn't running at a funny angle to the cylinder. And we can also start squaring up the horn faces to the cylinders 
so we get a nice running engine. If everything's out of square, we're out parallel, it just will fight itself and wear itself out really quickly. So over here we've got 75079's axle box crowns uh, being white metal, which are mentioned up there. Uh, so they are these semi-circular shapes. Um, the bearing is in here. That's the bearing surface, which will be white metal. These are all brand new. They've been machined from LG4 castings in-house, um, now on the white metal in stage. So this, you can see it's got this silvery color. That's where we've tinned it. That's the first stage with them. So you heat them up and effectively coat them with pure tin. And that is what makes the white metal adhere, adhere to the actual casting. Um, if it's not stuck properly, it will just break up and flake off and then give us loads of problems. So being really thorough about that is, is important. So then up here, you'll be able to see well, we've got one set up. You'll see Gavin getting ready to cast it. So over in the back, we've got the furnace, which is full of white metal. Um, it'll be brand new white metal on axle boxes because it's quite a crucial component. So we only use brand new stuff on them. White metal is made up, it's primarily a tin based alloy, um, but it's made up of components such as tin, antimony, copper, um, some white metals are lead, contain lead, but we use lead-free stuff. Moving on to the actual casting of it, the crown is heated up to a temperature of 250 degrees C. You've got to be really careful when you're touching any white metal that anything you're touching it with is dry. So we have to warm it up. If there's any moisture, effectively the white it will just explode. So you've got to be really careful with that. So. Crown seed up to 250 degrees, which you've got to do to get the tin effectively sticky. And then white metal's poured in, rotted through to get rid of any air bubbles and cool down. We try and cool it as quickly as possible because this, again, helps white metal adhere to the actual casting itself. Coming through to the big machine shop, we've got a couple of jobs on the go. We've got eccentric strap for the Orcerity being machined. This is fairly well on with which has been through the white metal in process, which I've just explained. Over on the bench, we've got a drain cock for 75079. These attach on the bottom of the cylinders. Being a later design, they are steam operated. Um, again, brand new because it lost all of its bronze fittings in Barry. Uh, some of the volunteer machinists on a third part of the 75 group have machined this. It's just on the bench to start going through it and finish assembling it along with the other three. Right, so next along we've got a bogey axle box for 499, which um, has been white metalled and machined. Um, it just needs, obviously, all the hand fitting jobs that and cleaning up jobs that are now associated with it. So it's been bored out on horizontal borer, faced off, and the horn faces have been done to give us the appropriate offsets again to make sure the axle is nice and parallel. Um, again, 75's axle boxes, once being metalled, will go through a similar process, um, although slightly larger scale. So we're in the small machine shop now. Um, over here we've got 75079's horn liners for the driving axles. Um, six of them will be old and reground because they're perfectly usable but six of them were heavily cracked, um, so we've had to replace them. A fair amount of work has had to go into these because they are mild steel base, so that's a machine, the channel effectively out of mild steel solid, and then they're manganese plated, so this face and this face is manganese, being a harder wearing surface, um, so they're riveted and welded on. So we've got six new ones, six new of those, which we're just getting towards finishing off. Moving down the workshop, we've got manifold for the austerity, which has just been overhauled, having a couple of new fittings because the old ones were life expired. Got new injector steam valves for Canadian Pacific's injectors. So that's just having the last couple of boiler fittings finished off, ready for when the boiler's done and we can start reassembling the engine. 
get another sample, some washout plugs, buy these as castings. They're a relatively consumable item when they get damaged or worn out they need replacing so they're being screw cut on a taper. So they're the square headed plugs you see located in various places around the boiler. Austerity front valve spindle cover um, having new bushes made it's had the spindles renewed so it's having new bushes to to suit to try and get that nice and tidy down here we've got pistons for the austerity this piston head was slightly oversized it having new cylinders it will be back to new bore size so we we're able to skim that down and recover it it's had the rods skimmed and recovered to bring them nice and parallel to keep the piston glands steam tight this head will require replacing and we're just re wait, awaiting the replacement casting. Under the rack in here we've got again two new piston heads for the 75 which have been done. Over in the background you've got young Matt making his, his bushes for the austerity valve spindle cover. We've now gone back into the main workshop. Here we've got our blue austerity or what there is of it at the moment. Um, as you can see, the new bunker come out well. It's had a first coat of paint. It won't get finished painted until the engine is assembled and then we can do it all at once, ensuring the color matches nicely. Moving down, as you can see, the wheels have been painted. This is a new addition, um, a mechanical lubricator. We've added this because effectively to improve the overall front end lubrication of the engine. Um, this will feed three places into the whole cylinder block. The old hydrostat would have just gone in one place through the steam passages, so it should get better lubrication. This will also have the bonus of when it's being moved around cold, it will constantly feed oil, whereas the hydrostat would only feed oil when it's in steam. At the front of the engine, you can see there's a big gap. That's where the cylinder block is, or should go, I should say. Um, the new one, has been cast, it's had a look, we've had a look at it and it's currently where we have a contractor for machining. Um, unfortunately, it's just too big for us to do here, hence why we've had to send it away, but that's progressing and that's sort of the biggest thing really to try and get sorted on the engine. Um, a little bit further back, you can see the inside of the frames are being repainted. Carl is taking the valve spindle guides off, uh, ready for re-metalling the white, the bushes on there. Next up, we've got the 75's tender. Um, I'm sure you've all seen quite a bit about this, but it's obviously a hell of an achievement for everyone involved because the chassis is pretty much all brand new, the exception of the axle boxes. Other than that, it is pretty well all brand new. Chassis is 95% complete, just needing a couple of jobs to finish off the brake gear and such like. Tank has now been fitted, fully fabricated tank which they wouldn't have had. So what we're doing, we're basically putting these dummy rivets on to try and make it, basically it'll look the part then. Because um, as I say, they never had perfectly flat sided tanks. So we'll put the rivets on to make it look right. It's all now just in the process of being bolted down. Then there's quite a lot of, still a lot of finishing off jobs to do, like making all the doors for the coal space and lockers, um, handbrake to manufacture and fit. Um, so yeah, still quite a bit of work, but it's coming on really well. So last up in the workshop, we got the tanks and cab roof for the austerity. These are in here for basically painting up now, ready for refitting. So they've been the tanks have been repaired. One had to have a half new, half side put in it, and all new baffles because they were just rotten. Um, both have had new floors as well because they were getting quite thin. So done that to try and make sure they're good for 10 years. We've also to try and make the cab a little bit nicer, incorporated a fire iron tunnel. So hopefully that'll make it just a generally a bit nicer engine to be on so it gets them out the way and it will also be, if they're needed, a lot easier to use. So to my left, we've got Canadian Pacific's tender. Um, this is outside because it's fundamentally complete. There's a couple of little finishing off jobs to do when we get components such as fitting the cab windows and a couple of other little bits. Um, we test filled it earlier in the week and there's just a couple of little water leaks to address but fundamentally that's sort of all complete and waiting for the other half now. Next up we've got the Peckett, obviously hasn't seen 
loads of work, but was certainly really useful to have a couple of weeks ago when it made a special guest appearance on the bell to make sure we had heat in the coaches when we were a bit short on engines. It's just having a little job rectified in the cab. Young Jamie's just made a new spindle for the steam brake oiler because that was leaking and you know, wanted rectifying really. So out on the pit road, we've got 506 running engine, um, no fundamental issues with it or work taking place recently, just the sort of normal maintenance that's involved with keeping on top of these. The Ivor, again, fit for the summer. We've just um, had it on annual exam. As part of that, we tied in a fair bit of maintenance, including renewal of the ash pan, having a look at the side rods. We took out quite a lot of side play because that was getting a bit excessive. So we've done all that now to try and make sure we're on top of it ahead of the main season. Next week, we'll have a busy week because we're getting ready, ready for gala. So we've got somewhere in, in the middle of the week, we'll have Pendennis Castle arriving, which will need fitness to run exam, gauging run, obviously following, coming off the lorry, it will need assembling. So, and then we've also got 5239 coming from Paint and Dartmouth Railway. Um, with thanks to both Didcot Railway Centre and Paint and Dartmouth Railway for loaning, the, loaning us these engines to hopefully put on a really good event. Well, there we are, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks once again for Mark for showing us around. Now, as always, if you'd like to keep track of everything happening at Ropley MPD, then the best page to follow on Facebook is Ropley MPD, where the guys here post regular updates. If you are coming down for a gala tomorrow, then do take the opportunity to go around a tour of Ropley, including the MPD side and further up in the carriage shop and boiler shop. They are excellent tours, well worth a visit. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend.